Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Recently, I decided to have a bunch of blood work done because I wanted to know if eating carnivore had any impact on health markers. And so the results really surprised me. I wanted to test my electrolytes. It's pretty standard and basic. That's not very exciting because they were all normal. Uh, <laughs> It's good, they're normal. I had my glucose tested. I paid, you know, out of pocket to have these tests done, by the way, and this was through a website called Ulta Lab Test. I've been ordering blood work like this online for things that I personally wanna test and my normal doctor won't order, basically. And I've been doing this probably for like a decade using different services and sites, certain ones. This is one of the best that I've found, by the way. They have the best prices and they always have coupon codes. Their customer service has been absolutely amazing. Now, basically, you pick out the test you wanna do from just every test you could possibly imagine and you locate a lab near you and then they order the test for you. They have a doctor who orders it and sends it through to that lab location and then you just go there, get it done and the results are emailed to you. It's always been like smooth sailing for me except I had a problem this time and it's not the fault of Ulta Labs, it's just that the place that I went to, unfortunately the phlebotomist um, <laughs> how do I word? I'm trying so hard to not be super rude, but she just didn't know what she was doing. And I just, I don't have any explanation for it. I've had blood work done so many times and I've never had such a terrible, terrible experience before from start to finish. In addition to having all kinds of problems, you could never imagine the amount of problems. She also took several vials of blood and just like threw them away and then sent several extra vials, which were just thrown away because they told me that in the, the, uh, the lab had some problems with what she sent to them. So unfortunately, some of the tests that I ordered did not produce any results because she didn't do the, whatever she was supposed to do properly, didn't use the right vial or didn't, protect the sample like she was supposed to. And specifically, I got my vitamin C level tested or I tried to, and that was the main number one reason I wanted to go there. I'm very curious and I wanted to know what my vitamin C levels would be because this is something that is a concern for a lot of people. And you hear people kind of talking about it when you eat a meat heavy diet and you don't have a lot of fruits or vegetables, how are your vitamin C levels? I will never know. I'll never know unless I'm in a bigger city again because I don't really have the time to go back there, you know, drive another three plus hours for that. I'm sorry I don't have those results, but I do have some other results that were really significant to me. The fasting blood glucose level was 79. The last time it was tested for me was December of 2022. It was 83. Okay, so that was like a mild improvement, but prior to that, so 2021, it was 98, and I think it often hovered closer to 100. I can see from this chart here that my health has improved. The lower carb and lower sugar I've gone, I can see it from that test. So it kind of helps me keep track of when I started changing my diet so much more. Over the last year, for anybody watching, I have been eating a lot healthier than I've ever eaten before. And for me, what that looks like is basically ketovore and Besides ketovore, it's kind of a mix for me between keto to ketovore. I don't have any gluten and I don't have any dairy. So that's how I've been eating, but also over the last few months, I've been doing an experiment with eating carnivore. So that's where I was most interested in seeing these results. I also tested my hemoglobin A1C and that was 4.9. Now that is a blood test that shows what your average blood sugar levels were over the past two to three months. For me, I don't know how it could get any lower than that considering I had no sugar at all. So I feel like that's the best result possible. Online, when I try to look it up, it's not like a zero to six type of thing. If you're around four, I think it's like very good. I'm not quite sure I had problems finding details on that. Now, other than that, one test that has been a problem for me in the past is my kidney function test. And I just, I'm not a doctor, so always consult with a doctor, but I'm just speaking from experience. This is a test that I personally find to be pretty inaccurate and very influenced and affected by your, maybe your diet, but especially your medications and supplements. And the reason I know this is just from experience because I've had so many blood tests done over the years, unfortunately, through the VA, through other things, because I had some health issues years back. So I just had every test under the sun so many times and I noticed patterns. I've also been aware that, you know, Tylenol has quite a negative effect on your, let me think, I need to get this right, on your liver. And ibuprofen has quite a negative effect 
on your kidneys. So I completely stay away from that stuff. I feel like I took it like it was candy many years ago because I listened to doctors. So I knew that those things could impact temporarily maybe or permanently impact your EGFR, your kidney function levels. And that's serious to me. And so I kind of thought about that and realized, you know, I wonder if vitamins and supplements affect it. And for me, they had a huge effect on it. So a few years ago, my doctor more or less told me that I was in stage three, I think 3A of kidney failure. My kidney function level, you know, there's, it's usually between zero and a hundred, but mine was hovering closer to 55 to 60 for quite a long time to the point where I'm like, I'm concerned, like why is my kidney function like getting lower and lower and it's stayed that way. And my doctor told me it was a normal part of aging and I was not even 40 at the time, but she said it was a part of aging and there's nothing you can do about it. Unfortunately, what it is, is it is what it is. Uh, you can just try to prevent further damage and further, you know, like permanent damage. But looking online, if you look it up, if you had a kidney function EGFR number of 55, it means that your kidney functions allegedly are functioning at 55%. And to anybody, I would think that would be concerning. So I did the test and the EGFR test, in my opinion, is not the most accurate thing, like I said. So in addition, if you are concerned about your kidney function or you're just curious, there's another test that is said to be a lot more accurate and it's called cystatin C. I believe I paid about $32 for this test. I used a coupon, it was 40 originally. And I think that's very reasonable. I had it done and the cystatin C number isn't that important, but I will share that it was 0.72. Then the lab will take that number of 0.72 and put it into a little calculator and then it'll spit out my EGFR or kidney function based on that and also based on your creatinine level. When they did that, my EGFR came out to 111. It is absolutely unheard of considering it makes no sense, honestly, because uh, your kidney function, like, if, like I said, if it's at 60, if your number is 60, you have 60% kidney function, so somehow I have 111% kidney function. We're doing very well nowadays. Just my normal EGFR, like I said, that is quite influenced by factors. That came out as 93, and I don't know if it's ever been that high. It's possible that it was that high once before, but 93 with an EGFR is absolutely amazing for me. It's really, really, really good considering it used to be 55 and I thought I was dying, you know, I thought I was very ill with kidney disease. I do want to say in regards to the kidney disease thing and my doctor, when she told me that, I just didn't buy it. Deep down, you got to like really trust your gut because it's scary when you get diagnosed with something, but seriously second guess, seriously look into it. Some people will have this problem and it is real, but some people won't. And it's really scary to be di improperly diagnosed when overall your health seems like it's great and you have no symptoms or issues that would make you think you were in kidney failure, yet you have a doctor telling you you basically are. I've had this happen to me before. I don't want to go on a big rant, but I had a doctor diagnose me with, uh, basically diagnose me with macular degeneration a couple of years ago. And I was so affected. <laughs> I was so like, shocked like I was like oh my gosh like I almost cried I was just like I can't believe this I'm gonna go blind this is really crazy and it took me a little time for it to sink in for my gut instinct to push through that and to think like this is crazy like this is crazy I have no real legit symptoms of it when you are told something like that you can start to recognize symptoms that you may not even be having so just by them telling you like Oh, like certain symptoms associated with it, you could start to, I don't want to say manifest it, but you might start to kind of convince yourself that, oh, I did have that thing and I did have this thing. That's not very healthy. It's better to just get a second opinion. So I'm not going blind either and I'm not dying of kidney failure. So I've had some really, really interesting experiences with doctors and I just feel like you need to be so careful. 
And so a lot of times I will, you know, go out of my way and pay out of pocket to get extra things done when I don't trust what they've said or definitely go somewhere else and get second opinions. I'm sorry for the little tangent there, but I think it's important to share this. So I'm super, super happy with my results. I've noticed such a big difference in my kidney function. It's really shocking. The last time I was tested for my kidney function because I wanted to know if like carnivore specifically really impacted it more than just when I was eating more keto. And in December of 2022, it was tested and it was at a 72, my kidney function 72. And a lot of doctors will say anything above 60, which is supposed to be considered stage two, I think, of kidney failure. They're like, it's normal, you're good but I don't want to be in any stage of kidney failure, frankly. So I'm really happy with my results and I have had some other things that I've done, some other tests uh, since doing this carnivore experiment of sorts and I'm gonna share them in a separate video.